Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. Uh, I'm playing a game I picked up at the Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo just a few months ago. It's this, uh, the Namco Museum, volume number two, uh, specifically the Japanese version. Why? Because of this, the Nijikon controller. And uh, I wanted to show off, there's a game that comes on the Japanese version of the Namco Museum that uh, is playable with the Nijikon, and there's also a hidden game. So the game comes with six titles, uh, most of which would be quite familiar to folks. Uh, at the top we've got Xevious, and Mappy is a well-known one. Um, and a couple of games that are more popular in Japan, I think, than they are here. There's um, Ga Plus, which is basically Galaxian or Galaga, but with some neat additions, and I'll play that in a little bit here. And Dragon Buster, which is a side-scrolling kind of adventure link sort of a game. I can't really describe it. Um, and the one at the top, I don't really know how that's pronounced. I think it's G-A-O-R-D-S? Gords? Or is it G-R-O-H-D-S? Grodes? I'm not sure. It's a tank game. Um, well, first of all, let me just, uh, I'll show you Gap Plus just to get you an idea of what some of these games are like. This one's really cool. Now this is actually running off the original Japanese software, so they've just ported it straight over. This is kind of, these Namco collections are basically like MAME in a way. Uh, you can do everything including, um, you can see some switches up there at the top that allow you to get into the uh, dip switch settings for each game, which is kind of cool. I don't really understand the Japanese, I think this is saying something about a save file or something like that. But anyway, let's, let's fire up Gaplus just to give you an idea of what some of these games are like normally. And here it is. Now, I uh, I love Galaxian, and Galaga, of course, is a classic. I don't think I've ever played Gaplus, and having just tried it out uh, when I was preparing to do this video, I'm really impressed. Uh, let me show you what it's like. Yeah, we've got our standard sort of uh, Galaga fare, but this one's borderline like um, Galaga 88 slash Galaga 90, depending on what region you're from. Um, it's, it's a much more animated, much more kind of a cool version. And you can pick up your enemies. You can select one of these guys as soon as they come down to attack me. Of course, I'm not going to do it now. There we go. I got him. And now he'll join my ship and you can do even more damage. It's kind of like the standard uh, Galaga idea of uh, combining your two ships together, but with this one you're capturing your enemy. Very, very cool game. I really, really like Gaplus. Um, it's been sort of a... Uh, because I got this for the Nijikon use, which I'll get to in a second, I didn't really think any of the other games were going to get much play. Oh, I died. Well, let's go back to the museum and I'll show you the actual reason I wanted to get this title. Now in the games list, you'll see here, in the uh, second on the left, Cutie Q. I actually did a video about that uh, about a year ago or so because uh, Cutie Q is a neat digital pinball type of a game that used a paddle controller. And they did a Namco Museum for the Wii where you actually use the Wii remote side to side to control the paddle and it was a really good game. Um, I haven't found I've gone to it very often. And in fact, as you can see in the intro here, there, Pac-Man's actually playing QDQ. Um, so let's fire this up, and as I mentioned, this version does support the Nijicon. So let's play QDQ using this controller, because I think the ability to go side to side like that, I don't know if you can make it out in the light here, but um, yeah, I've talked about the Nijicon enough times, it has paddle control. Uh, let's try QDQ using the Nijicon. Okay, it's a bit confusing. You have to actually plug in the Nijikon controller to the player number two port in order for it to be recognized. But here we go. That's me doing the 
side to side motion there. You can see the Nijikon clearer here. So yeah, as I as I rotate this thing, I'm doing it that way. So let's uh, let's have a quick game here. And launch the ball. Oh. Wow, actually it's a lot harder than I uh, anticipated here. Let's do another one. Well, I'm doing really well, but I didn't anticipate that at all. What's really weird about this collection is, so this, this game is not available in the Namco Museum 2 that was released in uh, North America. Uh, instead, in its place, it's like Super Pac-Man, which is a very fine game, I guess. I'm not particularly a big fan of it myself, but whatever. Uh, but what's strange is, in the, in the menus for both this version and the North American version, it talks about Nijikon support, and I always thought, well, I, I know you need Nijikon support for pole position on... I don't even know which, uh, museum title that one's on, but... Other than for pole position, there's no need, especially on this disc, like if, if, if Super Pac-Man is your other title, you don't need uh, Nijikon at all. So I don't really get why it's in the menu. Maybe it's just remaining code or something. I do have to say, this is actually surprisingly harder to control than I had anticipated. Uh, with the Wii Remote, it's actually maybe better, but maybe this is just because I'm just getting used to it here. You would think a more genuine paddle-like option would be the better way to go instead of just waving or waggling your Wii Remote back and forth, but I'm finding it a lot harder than I'd thought. Now, oh, there we go. Game over. Oh. However, there's actually a hidden game in here that we can also play. But for that, I have to go back to the menu. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Okay, it considers the Nijikon a volume controller. Huh. So PlayStation 1 standard to controller in port 1 and Nijikon in port 2. Now, let's go back to the, to the main uh, list of games here. All right, let's fire up Cutie Q. Now, Cutie Q has a long boot sequence, and that's beneficial because apparently what you want to do is, uh, as the booting is going up, you want to hit circle on your on your standard controller on, on this guy here. I want to hit circle seven times, then square six times, then X five times, and that'll unlock the secret game. Okay, it's booting up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Nope, didn't work. All right, let's try it again. Okay, after half a dozen attempts, I finally found it. So, let me start this up. Go to games. Go to Cutie Q. If you see the rainbow pattern as the startup, you've uh, you've taken too long. So, 
What I'm going to do is, so I've got my two controllers still plugged in the same way. I'm going to fire it up. I'm going to hit circle seven times, square six times, and X five times, and hit start. And I have to do all of that before the kind of rainbow pattern last step of the boot up sequence. So here we go. All right, after this one, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and start. Yes, we did not see the rainbow pattern part of the boot up sequence, which I'll uh, insert in a second. Let's now play the hidden game. And you'll see here a different boot up. And you see that rainbow pattern? That's kind of the one I'm talking about, although this is for the other game. But the same one in QDQ, if you see that, you've gone, you're too late. You can't unlock the secret game. This is Bombi, which is another digital pinball slash breakout type of a game. And it's a hidden game on the Japanese only version of the Namco Museum Volume 2. And it has Nijikon support. There you can see it there. Um, so basically, this was, I think, the precursor to QDQ. And it only has one paddle, but let's let's fire up this one and see if it's uh, any easier or any harder to play. Oh, interestingly, it does have two paddles. Okay. It's a slower game. Hurry, break out. Oh, I like that effect. Oh, no, there's a theory about it being slower. Whoa, okay, all right. Now you can see it is very a very similar layout, but and not quite so animated with the little creatures and stuff. Uh, I think this was um, the late 70s for this game. I can't remember, but oh man, ah, oh, okay. Well, let's uh, let's give us another go. But you know, this is pretty cool. I've got two of these digital pinball breakout-ish type games on this collection that both use the Nijikon. This is why, again, I wanted to get the Japanese version. I just thought, yes, I I like the look of this game. And having played that one on the, ooh, having played QDQ on the Wii, I thought, okay, well, if I can get more games like that, especially with Nijikon control or support, I should say, where are you going? Oh, you bum. Um, then I'm on board and this is pretty cool. Very hard to unlock. Oh, game over. Uh, very hard to unlock, but what is it? 1979. There you go. Let's uh, have a second game here. Launch the ball. There we go. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm definitely going to have to get used to using the Nijikon with this, though. As I say, if, you, if you're kind of curious about this thing, get that Namco Museum collection. Or There's the Remix and the Mega Mix. I believe QDQ is on both of them. And with the Wii Remote, it's actually... I don't want to say better. It's easier to control. I'm actually getting the hang of this now with the Nijikon, but what you'd really like to have is a proper paddle. Still, this is not bad. I wonder why there's um, the icon does not say Nijikon, but instead says volume control. I wonder if maybe in Japan they had some special volume control type of co uh, controller that was a little more like a paddle. That would be interesting to look that up and see if maybe that's better. The Nijikon's okay. I'm getting used to it, but it's a it's a learning curve. Like I thought this was going to be dead simple. And it's not. In fact, the Wii Remote's probably a little more intuitive. Whoa. Very cool, though, to be able to play two games like this. I like this stuff. You don't get games like this anymore. I mean, uh, something I really always enjoy about 70s titles, you... Uh, I mean, you had a lot of innovation in the 80s as well, but it seems like there's something about the 70s games that they just kind of... I don't know, they don't make them like this now, or they didn't uh, after a while. I, I'm also a big fan of Atari's video pinball machine. It's uh, more of an actual pinball with little digital uh, flippers. But it's got this kind of ball physics to it, and it's really good. And as far as I know, nobody's ever 
emulated that or included it in like any kind of a collection or anything. I wish I wish that would come back somehow. Uh, unfortunately, that's a game that a little bit like Warrior. Um, it's a game that really requires the overlay and the distance. And so just playing it in MAME with like a, a, a screenshotted overlay on top of it, I don't know that that would work as well. It's uh, a game that really, really worked with how the... Uh, it's a game that, that just looked better uh, in the original cabinet. Okay, well, this has been an interesting little experience. Ooh, high score. going pretty fast now. I'm thinking I'm not going to last much longer here. And then I'll just very briefly show you. Oh, wow. Nice. Got that big, big score. Um, I will briefly show you the other parts of the museum. Game over. High score. Nice. So yeah, that is Bombi. And again, that's, um, you got to hit that uh, collection of the controls the, the circle the square and the X uh, pretty rapidly before you see that rainbow pattern in fact I'll show you what the rainbow pattern I'm talking about for cutie Q looks like right here there it is if you've seen that you've taken too long you've got to reattempt to put in that code I'll briefly show you the museum here. This is pretty cool. You know, you've got this virtual world. You can look around. You can uh, walk here and there. You can even look up. You get a, a neat idea of this thing here. Now, there's a lady here who's asking information, but unfortunately, because it's all in Japanese, I don't know what she's saying. I think it's uh, something about creating a username, I guess, for storing your high scores. And here in the museum itself, we can actually investigate each of the games. So we've got that uh, Growarda, whatever it's called. Uh, this is Gaplus. Xevious is over here. QDQ, Dragon Buster, and Mappy. Uh, let's walk into the QDQ machine or er, area here. And yeah, you're actually able to walk through a little virtual world, and you can. Uh, Check out some promotional material. Again, I don't understand Japanese, so it's uh, kind of wasted on me, but uh, I can uh, zoom in if I want here. I can like look at all the, um, the details of the ads a lot more clearly. So that's kind of cool. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the instructions here on uh, how to use this menu system, it says for normal, you can hit the circle to zoom in, X to zoom out, or for Nijikon, hit the one to or the A to zoom in and the one to zoom out. So there are Nijikon controls built into this, um, and that also exists in the North American release, and yet that one doesn't have QDQ. So why would you need Nijikon control if the only titles that you're going to be using uh, the steering wheel controller are for pole position? I don't get that. Having looked this up online, I can tell you that over here is the actual uh, instruction manual for the uh, game. And we've got, I think, high score entries or something. Um, there's a circuit board here. You can actually check out the board itself. And over here, some instructions on how to play and even a little slide project, uh, slideshow showing all of the different icons and avatars in the game. Yeah, so you can cycle through all the different um, items that are in the game, all the different animations and stuff. Pretty cool. But the piece de resistance is down here. We 
what you're looking at here is a virtual creation of the game. Uh, it's not it's not supposed to actually be the the table itself, but um, each of the six games has like this neat uh, little virtual world you can walk around in. And in this case, I think there's some creatures flying around in the sky. Did I see them? Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, regardless. Yeah, so you can kind of walk around in a virtual. Yeah, there's a ghost. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's this virtual little space you can walk around that's sort of themed to the specific room. And you can actually walk up and play the machine. There's this very nice recreation of the actual console. Very, very cool. Oh, what the heck. Let's have one more game as I do my outro. So there we go. There's QDQ with NijiCon control or support, only on the Japanese version of the Namco Museum 2. And also the hidden game, Bombi, also with Nijikon support. So that's why I got Volume 2 for the Namco Museum, the Japanese-specific version at the Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo, because I wanted to play this. I think I'm actually getting better at it with control here on Nijikon, so... Yeah, maybe I'm better, I don't know. It's, it's still pretty darn good with the Wii Remote, but um, I think you kind of want a sliding back and forth analog type control, whereas the uh, the Wii Remote just, you're weaving your pointer around and it doesn't feel quite the same. Anyway, that is QDQ and Bombi on the Namco Museum number two. And until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.